here live. Welcome, and now introducing Pierce Helfer. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much. Well, welcome everyone uh, to the fifth and final World Cup plus Social Good Hangout. Uh, the panelists and I are very excited to be with you today for this World Cup plus Global Partnerships plus Social Good panel, where we'll be discussing the power of partnerships to bring about uh, life-saving change in the world. Uh, the focus on partnerships, I think, is particularly important and, and relevant uh, as, as we kicked off the World Cup yesterday, which is uh, really the world's largest production and, and, and a production, a tournament that wouldn't be possible, that wouldn't be successful without partnerships at its core. Uh, partnerships with, with, with different countries, with governments, with NGOs, with companies. The, the World Cup is really an entire world coming together for a single event. And, uh, and similarly, Nothing But Nets and the global fight against malaria, which will be a focus for us uh, today, relies on, uh, on partnerships. The campaign uh, that all of our panelists are involved in is Nothing But Nets, uh, a global grassroots campaign run by the United Nations Foundation that has partnerships at its core. Uh, Nothing But Nets is a campaign to save lives by preventing malaria and uh, has, has been successful over the last seven years, raising over $50 million, uh, sending over 7.5 million long-lasting insecticide-treated bed nets to families, children, refugees across sub-Saharan Africa that really need them because we have the strengths of our partners behind us. And, you know, this, this fight against malaria is a huge success story in the power of partnerships to come together. Uh, in the last 10 years, uh, over 3.5 million lives have been saved worldwide uh, through the coordinated efforts of the global malaria community. When Nothing But Nets uh, got started in 2006, 2007, a child was dying every 30 seconds from this uh, treatable, preventable disease. Uh, and now that statistic is that a child's dying every 60 seconds. And so while that is still too much, and, and, and the task for us is to, is to continue until uh, we wipe malaria away, we do think that this is a good moment to, to highlight the progress and also talk about the partnerships that have, that have brought us this far and that uh, are needed to take us to the next level. I'm really excited today to be joined by uh, three panelists who have been instrumental in their own ways uh, in the fight against malaria as partners to Nothing But Nets. Uh, our first panelist is Diego Gutierrez. Uh, we're thrilled to have Diego here. Diego is uh, a former U.S. men's national soccer team player. Uh, he's a major league soccer legend, uh, several time all-star, and, and best 11 over the course of a decade in major league soccer. Uh, Diego is, is largely responsible for getting Major League Soccer and the American soccer community involved in nothing but nets. And that's resulted in millions of dollars raised, thousands, if not more, uh, people engaged in this campaign. And, and Diego's been involved for, for quite a long time and continues to uh, get players involved, uh, coordinate with the league to make sure they're involved and bringing various partners to the table. Diego is, is, is as good of a champion as, as we have. Uh, we're also joined by Ari O'Benson. Ari is uh, the Deputy Secretary General of one of Nothing But Nets' very best partners, Junior Chamber International. So Ari helps lead an organization of uh, 200,000 uh, young professionals around the world. JCI has raised uh, Ari, you can give me the, the exact number, but, but over $2.5 million uh, in the fight against malaria over the last, um, over the last five plus years and mobilized hundreds of thousands of constituents in interesting ways 
uh, to send nets and save lives. And, and beyond just talking about malaria, Ari can talk about the other work that JCI is doing, life-saving work in communities all over the world uh, to, to, to make a difference. Uh, extra kudos to Ari uh, for, uh, for agreeing to be on this panel uh, just 60 minutes before his home country kicks off in this World <laughs> Cup. Ari is a uh, Cameroonian, and uh, Cameroon uh, kicks off against Mexico in 53 minutes now. Uh, but but I, I told Ari before, uh, I, I bet he never dreamed of, uh, of hanging out with all of us uh, just minutes before, the nervous minutes before uh, Cameroon yeah. kicks off. Um, so good luck to Cameroon, and, and I'll also say what's extra special about having Ari here today is, is that uh, Nothing But Nets has not only a strong partnership history with JCI, but we have a very strong partnership history with Cameroon. And so in 2011, Nothing But Nets was involved in Cameroon's first ever uh, nationwide bed net distribution, uh, because in Cameroon, malaria is a top killer of children under the age of five. And Nothing But Nets is also committed uh, in 2014 to continue uh, helping people within Cameroon's borders. Uh, there's a humanitarian crisis that's been flaring in Central African Republic, and refugees are fleeing to Cameroon, and Nothing But Nets, we're in the process of, of, of helping those people. So it's great to have Cameroon uh, represented at this Google Plus Hangout. Uh, the third and final uh, panelist I want to introduce is, is Charles Bohr, who is uh, a Spanish teacher and the head boys soccer coach at the Loomis Chafee School in, uh, in Windsor, Connecticut. And uh, Charlie uh, has been unbelievable. Uh, he's grown a partnership with Nothing But Nets just in the last two years, which is his tenure at Loomis Chafee. Uh, he's decided to, to take his role as the soccer coach and, and use it as a way to apply other lessons. And, and one of them is, uh, is giving back and getting his, his, his players interested in something you know, beyond, uh, beyond the pitch. And so the last two years, uh, Loomis Chafee has gotten their players involved in raising money to send nets, raising awareness across campus and across their, uh, their home community uh, to, to help Nothing But Nets in, in our life-saving work. Loomis is, uh, I don't want to step on Charlie too much, but, but they've been hosting these, uh, these, these tribute games where uh, they're, they're dedicating entire games to, to Nothing But Nets, and, and it's a pretty special thing. And so, you know, whether, whether you're at the high school level, whether you are uh, a men's national team soccer player, or whether you are heading a large global organization, you know, everybody has a role in, in, in the fight against malaria and in partnerships overall. And it's only by combining those partnerships that, that we can see the 50% reduction in, in child mortality, that we can see the three and a half million lives saved, and that we'll be able to realize all of our dreams of, um, of one day in our lifetime uh, defeating malaria. And so, again, glad to have you all here. And, and Diego, I want to bring you into the conversation first. Uh, can you talk about how you first got interested in Nothing But Nets and, and how you took that interest to action, getting players and, and the league uh, involved in what we do? Yeah, thanks, Chris. I, I, uh, delighted, I'm delighted to be here, and I thank you for the, the very kind introduction. Uh, my involvement with Nothing But Nets was actually born from, from the sport itself, soccer. Uh, my kids were playing in a small soccer team, you know, when they were a, 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 in a very young age. And my wife used to carpool with a lady that was involved with some UN Foundation activities. When she exposed us to what Nothing But Nets was about, uh, we started learning a little bit more. We did some research. Obviously, we read uh, Rid Riley's article. Uh, but at the end of the day, what we were left off was a, a very profound message where my wife and I sort of looked at each other. We said, you know, we really should be doing something to, to combat this disease. We should be really 
use a, using the platform that we have as professional athletes and, and using that public spotlight to really shun, shine that light on what this is about. So uh, to make a long story short, I started basically talking to, to the team that I was playing with at the time, the Chicago Fire of Major League Soccer, uh, to try to start putting together an activity to raise funds towards nothing but nets. And that turned into, let's do something more. Why stop in Chicago? Why stop at the Chicago market? Let's do something that is really meaningful and try to partner up with the league. Well, little by little, I started sort of recruiting players throughout, you know, markets and, you know, putting the pieces together strategically to, to put it, ourselves in a position where we could really go to the league and say, guys, we have an army of players that really want to voice what this campaign is about what this message is about, and we're really interested in saving lives. Um, so that's exactly what we did, and we enlisted a, a, a variety of players throughout basically every Major League Soccer market, uh, and uh, ultimately we went to, to Major League Soccer and we said, can we partner up? Uh, it, that was really the birth and, and, and the genesis of a beautiful relationship that continues to, to thrive to this day with various players, not only in Major League Soccer, but in lower leagues throughout the United States, as well as the men's national team, who on Monday will be debuting in the World Cup in Brazil. So for us, it has, it has been a tremendous partnership. The sport uh, itself has been a great platform for this partnership and for, for the overall good and for the combating of this disease. So was there... Was there one moment in particular, Diego, where, where this idea came to fruition and you just thought, yes, we've arrived, and, and you know, was, was, there, was there that one telling moment? Well, there were a lot of, i, I got to say, throughout my, my involvement with Nothing But Nets and the UN Foundation, there have, there have been a lot of special moments. i got to tell you, though, uh, for a small, young, poor boy born in Colombia, South America, to find himself in the lawn at the White House being honored by the President of the United States, for me, it, it was a really, really special moment. And not something that, that I was necessarily looking for, but I think it was a, vi a byproduct and a validation to all of the hard work that so many people had put into, uh, you know, going into this campaign in, in the partnerships and the, in the, uh, the so many allies that we were able to get on our side. Uh, as you know, Chris, uh, when, when you're involved in a, in a campaign like Nothing But Nets, there are so many people that do a tremendous amount of work that don't necessarily get to go to the White House. So uh, I, I was wearing all those people's souls in my sleeve that particular day. That's great. And, 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 and I want to come back to you, Diego, to talk about partnerships and to talk about maybe how this has jump-started the MLS and the great partnerships that they have going on beyond malaria and, and how that makes a difference in, in communities. But I want to go, Ari, to you. Um, JCI has been a, a tremendous fundraising partner for Nothing But Nets. You've activated chapters all over the world uh, to send nets. Can you talk about, about, in this partnership, how you're mobilizing communities all over the world in the fight against malaria? Uh, thank you, Chris, for for put, giving me the opportunity to talk about this. Um, collaboration is something that really excites us as an organization and happens to be one of uh, the key strategies on which uh, our organization turns around. Um, I, I must say this, that the opportunity that we had to get involved with uh, Nothing But Nets is an opportunity that has transformed our organization. It is an opportunity that has enabled us to bring young people, to unite young people around the world um, behind a simple idea, but a simple idea that is powerful enough uh, to change and transform and save lives of people um, across the world. Um, and when, when we started this uh, in 2008, um, little did we imagine that we would be able to excite people in Europe, for example, to be interested about um, malaria in Africa or people in Asia. But as we began to introduce the idea, 
we were overwhelmed by the creativity and just the desire for people to do something. And, and, and what, what we learned from this exercise is that you could go to somebody and ask them for uh, $10 to, to go to some foundation. And they may or may not give you. And if they do, that may be the end. But if you go to them and say, give me $10 and this would save a life, it totally changes everything. And I think that this is the key and this, that the contribution that people make to this. They do this because they are excited about the outcome. They're excited about that life that it saves, that village that, that it transforms and all of that. And that has been the push behind this. Now, besides just the fundraising, um, there has been a lot of awareness that has been created. The, as an organization, we took an idea when we started this conversation that was basically focused in the United States and took it to 89 countries within a year. Um, and, and really, this has been an a effective example of how um, collaboration could lead to measurable results. Uh, and, and today, I sit here in, in Malta um, after having a report made in our General Assembly about uh, the work that the organization has done um, with Nothing But Nets. So basically, um, we empower young people to be able to take the destiny of their country and their world into their own hands. And that's how we've been able to, um, to, to gradually support this initiative in saving lives um, around the world. Sure, and, and, and I want to I, I wanna point out that none of the panelists today, nor your host, uh, have a particularly deep global health background. Uh, you know, people think of malaria as as a very technical as a very technical problem. But I think an important point is that you know everyone has a role to play, whether you're a doctor or scientist or community health worker. But whether you're uh, a soccer player, uh, a student, or or, or anyone else, uh, our JCI is is an organization full of young professionals, um, not necessarily all doctors or scientists. What are a few of the things that JCI members are doing to to help us defeat this disease, and and maybe you can even talk about what's going on this week in Europe where you are right now. Well, um, our members are, come from a, a very diverse background and, and and different professional as well as cultural backgrounds. Um, what what we have been what struck us about this project is that people have been very very creative in all the things that they do to be able to not only raise money but engage people behind this movement this global movement to fight against malaria. I, I, I begin by talking about what's going on here this week and we're seeing a lot of uh, creative things happening here. I just walked through uh, the trade show of the JCI conference here in Malta. Uh, and I ran into this lady who was introduced to me called Eva, who is, um, who, who is an artist. And she has all these paintings there. She calls it um, painting for nothing but nets, or art for nothing but nets. Uh, and people are sitting down and having to do pieces of art. She's donating all of that. And all of the money that she's raising is going to nothing but nets. And uh, Margaret uh, McDonnell, who works with Nothing But Nets, couldn't be here with me because she's um, at the Nothing But Nets basketball tournament that is going on now. So the delegates at this conference are playing a basketball game. And every, every net that is made <laughs> is money that is raised to support uh, the Nothing But Nets campaign. And I can go on and on. Um, uh, we, we have an annual JCI regatta. Of, of, uh, that is done um, in, in the Serbian seas every year, organized by JCI, um, uh, the Netherlands. And yesterday, uh, Margaret received a check from JCI Denmark in the sum of 5,000 euros. That is also as a result of what they call the Nothing But Nets Challenge, where people go on a 48-hour um, challenge of running and swimming and all of that. So. Just creative things happening all over, all around us. We know 
of the great uh, Budapest Bamako African run. This young people who drove from Budapest in Hungary all the way to Bamako, Mali, to raising money along the way for nothing but nets. And obviously the ongoing JCI USA bus tour that is knocking on the doors of uh, congressmen and senators across the United States asking them to support this great initiative. It is sure. just the passion of the people and their creativity that's getting us there. Yeah, I, I, I will make note that, that whether it's a bus tour across America or uh, a regatta that's happening in the in the Baltic Sea, you know, JCI does take the award of, of all of our partners for uh, most most creative challenges. And so the basketball tournament's going on right now, uh, where 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 you're donating for every shot made, um, uh, a grassroots basketball tournament uh, of 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 everyday Europeans. Uh, part of me wishes they donated for every shot missed uh, <laughs> instead of shot made, but we'll, we'll move on from that. Um, Charlie, um, I, I want to bring you in. I mean, Ari and JCI are a tough act to follow. I mean, a, a global organization, but but these grassroots activations are, are equally important for us, and I think you lead a, a really interesting, effective, and, and growing partnership with the campaign can you talk a little bit about what 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 Loomis Chafee is doing in the fight against malaria, and what inspired you to get involved? Uh, and and I guess full disclosure, I am a, I am a, an <laughs> alum of Loomis Chafee School, where where Charlie is the head coach. Sure. Uh, well, just to give you a little bit of a background um, on a personal level, uh, so I've been playing soccer my entire life, uh, and I also three years ago had the opportunity to visit the country of Ghana and then shortly after that about a year later I also visited Nigeria and so in our team right now we actually have two Nigerian young men so this type of an organization really hits home because of, of their you know obvious clear relationship uh, to the you know I guess to malaria and, and all of its uh, effects that, that it's had on them personally and also uh, you know in their family and their communities in in Africa, um, but I I think uh, Dr. Ari, right? Is that right, Mr. Yeah, Ari. 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 So yeah. I I think Ari. one thing that that excites a lot of the students and student athletes and and teachers in our community is the fact that it it's their ability to help is very tangible and very quantitative because it's just ten dollars to buy a net. You you almost feel like you're buying like a shield for example, in, in providing a family with a way to protect themselves. So it, it's very clear uh, how you can help out. And uh, you certainly are, in terms of how much money we've we've raised, is just a drop in the bucket compared to some of the uh, the numbers that I've heard uh, you say, Chris, you know, in terms of what Diego has been doing with the MLS and what Ari has been doing with his organization. However, it's interesting how quickly it can grow because uh, last year was our first year putting on a, a nothing but Nets game where we wore different jerseys in a second here I'll, I'll show a couple photos of our team uh, just before the game they're, they're nice nice little jerseys and my assistant Jay Thornhill who who Chris knows well put all that together so we actually only raised two hundred dollars and that is just a sliver and, and then this past fall we raised tenfold of that and raised two thousand dollars so I can only imagine what we're gonna do for this coming fall <laughs> You know what I mean? It's just it's unbelievable. I and mean, we had people, kids, kids in the school making YouTube videos and just being very witty and, and, and creative again along the lines of what uh, Ari was mentioning. And um, you know, it's a type of thing that people get excited about. Uh, and um, you know, the kids the kids love it, and I think the teachers also love it. So if if you don't mind, what I'm going to do is just show a couple of pictures here of. Uh, of how all this got started. I'm going to do my best. You can let me know how the how it looks. So I'm going to see if if that so these jerseys can you hear me okay? Yeah. So these these are some of the jerseys we put together. It has that nothing but Nets logo on it and then we we wear them for that one game of the season and we have people come out and donate money and let me just show the team picture here. 
And so, again, this is from our, uh, oops. Oh, boy. Sorry about that. <laughs> <laughs> Give me one second. Here we go. So here's just a little a team picture of this is from our first year. So you, you can see we had the game outside. We didn't have that many fans. And then uh, this past fall, we actually had a, a night game where we had hundreds of fans come and obviously raised a lot more money. Now let me show you that picture. Uh, and now, you know, not just Loomis Chafee is involved. We've gotten some of the local soccer clubs. Some of the of my colleagues have young children who play in uh, youth programs, and so they did they did like a can drive and, and donated over a hundred dollars and all the change that they that they obtained from turning in their cans and bottles and all that stuff. So, it, at any rate, it's just amazing how quickly it can grow. And um, I can't you know I can't thank Chris enough for uh, introducing this to uh, to us. Well, so so Charlie. Um what is is there i guess what have you what have you seen in in your in in some of your players um in terms of 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 how this has maybe inspired them um to get more excited whether it's with nothing but nets or 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 different causes have you seen how you know as as a teacher as a coach putting this in front of your players has has a uh, has sparked something inside of them i i would say so i think one of the the kind of trademarks of the of the culture that I've I've tried to uh, I guess embrace during my tenure here so far as the coach at Loomis Chafee is is appreciation and this goes right along the lines of being appreciative of of you know I guess your health and and every of the other opportunities that we have uh, here at a school like this and and being able to play on unbelievable fields and you know to have each other and, and grow and learn from one another so this type of uh, of organization plays right into that we talk about it all the time on a daily basis what do you appreciate you know what do you value it, it and I think it's nice, although it's very competitive, I mean, it's like an international arms race in terms of the recruiting process here. We have kids in our league from all over the world, Brazil, Nigeria, Ghana, Cameroon, Senegal, you know, a, a lot of African countries. And the level is high. Kids are getting recruited to all the top D1s. I mean, one of our Nigerians has various full-ride offers now. But looking past that and just the obvious, which is, is soccer and trying to win because we're all competitive, is again just uh, appreciating uh, these types of opportunities um, and learning more than anything, learning about other cultures and not being closed-minded, but rather you know trying to to understand, asking questions, not being shy. You know, we have kids on our team, as I was saying, from all over the world. They have different accents. They they know different languages, and I think sometimes it's easy to to just. Uh, suppose or assume that you know how a person might be uh, and so being involved in this helps us learn more about the world and, and ultimately about ourselves too. Yeah and, and and I think it's worth pointing out that these partnerships that Nothing But Nets has uh, ha have have inspired individuals to, to go on and do incredible things. I mean with, with Major League Soccer, with, with JCI, with countless others but with uh, Loomis, Charlie, you got one of your players uh, involved, Nick Saylor, who who now yeah. is playing soccer at Providence College. That's right. Um, and and so the game was played in the fall. In the spring, we get uh, an email, and and a couple weeks later, we get a check because one of your players was also passionate about about music, about rap, right? And put on his first ever concert. I guess I guess you can tell the story better than me. Well, so Nick, uh, a fantastic soccer player, but more importantly, as I said before, a great person, an amazing kid, was a captain in his senior year last year, and it, it, it's, it's incredible how he incorporated the Nothing But Nuts cause into his music, and I think what it did for him was just provide him with more passion and more of an outlet to to do what he does best and, it, and that's the cool thing everybody who's been involved has I think found ways to exploit what they love 
and and use the cause uh, in that in that way, I guess. Um, yeah, no, uh, absolutely, and 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 I was uh, talking with Nick, and he's he's trying to get his uh, his Providence Club uh, behind nothing but nets, and so so what you sparked, you know, at, at this school in Connecticut, no, that's you all know, you. that's all you, that's all you, reverberates. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, Diego, let's let's go back to you. Um, talk to me as a talk to me as a dad, and and you've had the opportunity to travel with us. Uh, because of this partnership, but you know what? What is being a father? And and, and we have three fathers on, on the panel, all of all of you know young children of, of varying ages. Uh, what does it mean to you to to a, as a father, but also talking to your kids about this? Well, I, I think that uh, the two gentlemen on on the panel, as well as yourself, Chris, would probably agree with me in that. Yes, it is. It is a major factor. Um, when I originally got involved with with nothing but nets, my kids, my daughters, uh, were about five and six, and my son was basically two years old. Uh, they were right where that mortality rate is uh, in some of the some of the problem areas in Africa. When I got an opportunity to travel, and I was able, obviously, I was I was very emphatic about helping before I traveled and, and I learned and I saw footage and I saw pictures uh, but once I got the opportunity to travel and really witness for myself uh, and, and really see at first hand what it was about and how dramatic the problem was uh, I can tell you it was life-changing and, and so being a parent and putting yourself in those situations where you know there are mothers and fathers that really don't have a choice. They're really, you know, 40 or 50 or 60 miles away by foot from the nearest public assistance. Uh, it, it really, it really sparks an even bigger fire to help. I, I can tell you that uh, my wife and I were were positively affected once we gave we came back from Africa. Um, but it was definitely a major factor, and I, I mentioned the experience in, 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 at the White House before, but equally as important, I, I, I can tell you the, 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 the trip that we got to experience in, in, in Mali was, was, was massive. Very good, and, and, and Ari, um, similar question to you. you uh, you're from Cameroon. And and you've seen more than more more than all of us put together the devastating firsthand effects of malaria, and so can can you talk a little bit about that and how you see partnerships uh, like nothing but nets has with with various UN agencies and other partners the the human difference that that makes. Oh yes, um, I. Particularly because I'm from Cameroon, particularly because I grew up in, in circumstances where um, I have had malaria several times and, and been lucky enough to have come from a, a family that could um, afford um, or, or that was educated enough to know how to, to prevent and take care of the disease. But if you do recall our, our last trip to Cameroon, where we visited a village outside Yaoundé and visited this family that had a little girl, and they told us the story about the one night that she slept without the mosquito net and how she ended up um, having um, um, malaria. Uh, and they bore testimony to, to the fact that just that one night without the net, exposed that little girl who was just about 18 months old um, to malaria. And uh, you can imagine the millions of children who are vulnerable to this disease just for the few hours that they could be exposed to it. And, and, and that goes to emphasize the, the, the reason why um, many more people must be involved in this, many more people must be mobilized behind this idea and and I look at it as well from the perspective of of a father and and, and I think about my own little boys um, if they had grown in Cameroon um, they would be equally ex ex exposed to this disease um, 
as every other little child that grows uh, that grows up in, in, in Africa and in, in, in Cameroon. So just one child that is exposed to this disease that is preventable is unacceptable. And, and the fact that that child is born in another part of the world, in Africa, doesn't mean that that child um, shouldn't have a life to themselves that is full of opportunities. And that's what this is all about. It, it's about um, refusing to accept that a life can just be taken away um, meaninglessly when we can all do something that's not too much um, to prevent it. And, and from a collaboration standpoint, it takes people at all levels, whether it is government and institutions, but more importantly, just individuals. So we're talking about a collaboration here between JCI and, and Nothing But Nets at an international level. But it, I can tell you how partnerships have trickled down you know, to whether it's communities in Japan that now have vending machines with companies in Japan that would never have thought about doing anything about malaria. Those vending machines where every drink that is bought is a contribution that is made to Nothing But Nets. Those partnerships that are made all over um, European cities, whether it's in Denmark, where they put docks um, to swim on the river and in collaboration with the city council, is those little partnerships with organizations that we may not even know that are supporting this initiative that will make a difference and will continue to make a difference uh, as we save lives of children who are really um, in need of protection. Yeah, and, and and listen. I think on every level, I think we've we, we've we've been able to illustrate the point that that with this with this nothing but nets campaign, um, we've we've been able to build partnerships to make uh, a significant difference. Partnerships with with the UN agencies and other partners on the ground who are who are doing the work, but also the grassroots partnerships that are getting you know, members and fans and students all over the, the country and, in fact, the world together in, in the fight against malaria. But uh, each of you representing uh, institutions or organizations that, that do more than just fight malaria, I'm hoping that you can each uh, give an example of, of, of what your uh, organization is doing, you know, maybe in the form of another partnership uh, not just focused on malaria. That's that's similarly making a huge difference. Charlie, let's start with you. I mean, what's a uh, what's what's something else that's going on at Loomis Chafee? What are the other things that that this school is doing to to mobilize students and families and faculty uh, to to make a greater difference? Um, well, I'll, I'll speak first to what we're doing is a is an or, is a soccer organization. We also have been very fortunate to have have gone to a couple of different places since I've been here. Uh, my first year, we actually we were very lucky. We traveled to Spain and Barcelona specifically and participated in some community service at some um, orphanages. Uh, during that trip, we were able to play the Barcelona U-17s. So again, we're coupling uh, the, I, I think, the amazing opportunities and, and, you know, again, how fortunate we are. We're always trying to give back uh, and to demonstrate how much we appreciate the, those opportunities that we do have. Uh, on, the, on the local level, Loomis Chafee, uh, as a school, we also have a, a branch uh, or, I guess, a, a, an area which is dedicated to community service. And every year that I've been here, uh, every spring, I've put together a, a little futsal kind of community service effort where we go to a local boys and girls club which is in the northwest end of Hartford uh, and it's I mean compared to the, the type of resources uh, small classrooms and type of facilities we have here at our campus this is completely different and it's very eye-opening for many of the kids who have ne who ha have never seen something like that before and we tutor kids we we coach futsal we play soccer with them we play a lot of little games you know because we're also trying to encourage just general health and well-being, uh, and and really quality of life and happiness um, among you know anyone that we come in contact with. So those are, I, I guess, two examples. Some other things we've done. We all sorry, one more quick thing. Um, 
then again, in terms of travel, this past spring, we actually went to Costa Rica and did some community service there. And we actually, believe it or not, played the U-17 national team. Um, I'm happy to say we tied them 1-1, although they probably should have beat us. But, uh, you know, those are some things that, that we've been doing, and we hope to continue participating in as well. Uh, really good. And, and I do think that, you know, when you talk, it, it, it brings up a good point that we talk about these partnerships making a big difference, but, but in each of your cases, uh, it's really been that inspired individual or individuals uh, that have that have ignited uh, these partnerships. Uh, Diego, representing Major League Soccer as as a as a former player, legend, and and current voice of Sporting Kansas City, uh, talk about whether it's Sporting KC or MLS, some of the other partnerships that have taken form and 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 made a big difference. Well, one of the things that we're really focusing on right now, Chris, is is forming partnerships with various elite and non-elite soccer clubs throughout the country. Our goal, as we've all talked about it on, on this panel before, is inspiring youth. There's, there's a very dangerous weapon for the good, that is the innovation and the ingenuity of youth. That's what we really want to focus on tapping into. That's what we've been doing. That's really what the platform that MLS offers allows us to do is to tap into that. So we've, we've been going around doing 3v3 tournaments, whether it's in Kansas City or in D.C., in various parts of the country, uh, whether it's you know, through another partner of ours down in Louisiana, encouraging through social media, having kids juggle a soccer ball for donations, whatever those challenges might be. It's inspiring those kids through soccer, through the sport, uh, to do something outside of what they would typically do, to think outside the box. I think that innovation and that ingenuity, that uh, that creativity that youth offers is, is a big af uh, big asset and something that we really want to tap into. So, so far we've we've received tremendous response. Great, and, and, and Ari, same, same question to you, but maybe you could even talk about uh, JCI's commitment to to the UN overall and the Millennium Development Goals, so the, some of the other partnerships. Sure. Um, JSTI is an organization that <clears throat> provides development opportunities that empower young people to create positive change. And for all, nearly 100 years now, our members have um, identified needs within their communities, in the environment around them. Uh, they've worked with local partners to take action to provide solutions uh, to those uh, challenges. And all over the world, um, every year, there are hundreds of, of projects or initiatives that are led by JCI members in, in, in towns and cities uh, all across the world that uh, get towards addressing specific needs within uh, those communities. And now, after the the Millennium Development Goals were adopted as an organization. We wanted to figure out how we could, um, even though continue to work locally, um, lend a hand to, um, to this global initiative where we wanted to see the world a better place using the Millennium Development Goals. And so since 2004, our members committed themselves to working uh, towards uh, furthering the Millennium Development Goals in communities across the world. We actually tried as much as possible to transform the activities that we do to be aligned to the Millennium Development Goals. And if, if we speak today, one year before the, the, the expiration of, of, of these goals, we can say that the organization has really significantly in communities in different parts of the world advance the Millennium Development Goals, whether you were fighting against poverty in, in Brazil, where I spent some time traveling to nine uh, communities there in Brazil, just seeing the work that members were doing, or a uh, sustainable development project that I uh, visited in, in Paraguay, where um, the members essentially, uh, instead of just providing food to an orphanage, were able to help the kids in that first orphanage. They acquired land and actually set up a farm. That orphanage is now self-sufficient 
in providing food and generating revenue for themselves. Uh, uh, it is all of these little initiatives that individuals, ordinary people with two hands and two legs and a head are doing that will significantly contribute um, to the global challenges. With one life that is saved, one community that is be made better, one child that goes to school that didn't have the opportunity uh, to go to school, all done by ordinary citizens and not waiting for that government to be able to do it or for that uh, business to be able to do it, but pulling their own resources and at the same time educating other people, bringing other people along. Uh, and we are in a world that still has opportunities for people to get involved. And I think that platforms like this should be able to inspire more people to join in this common movement of social good that we all want to do. Yeah, it's a it's an excellent point, Ari. And and there's a need. There's not just opportunity. There's a need for people to get involved. And you know, I'm I'm in a very fortunate place. You know, running running the Nothing But Nets campaign to be able to to experience, influence, witness partnerships every day that are making a huge difference uh, with with your three organizations, but with you know, uh, the NBA, with the UN Refugee Agency, with UNICEF, um, with the Union for Reform Judaism, you name it. Um, partners are really, and I see this every single day, partners are really driving uh, the change that we are able to make. And I'll even say from a, from a personal standpoint, it was nothing but Nets's uh, partnership with Sports Illustrated um, back in 2006 in reading that Rick Riley article, uh, that that was what inspired me um, to, to to get involved, um, and and it's all about more partnerships. There's there's a lot of problems in the world. We're all very aware of them. Whether it's you know whether it's it's uh, it's whether it's hunger, whether it's malaria, whether it's whether it's anything else. And and I do firmly believe that partnerships are. Uh, are in many ways the answer, bringing together, you know, uh, public and private entities, getting the government involved as partners to help bring about big change. It's it's partnerships, big and small, that that are going to be necessary to tack to tackle uh, the world's largest problems. And I think that our our panelists today illustrate very well how, at every single level, um, partnerships are making an impact. Uh, to, to, to wrap up, um, Ari, uh, good luck to your indomitable Lions, uh, Cameroon, as they kick off in 10 minutes against uh, 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 USA's biggest foe, Mexico. Uh, your, your star number nine, Samuel Eto, is uh, a champion in the fight against malaria, and, and that will put me over the top. Um, so I'll be rooting for Cameroon, and and uh, and here's my promise to to send two bed nets if they win today. Oh, great, great! I, I I'll make a donation for every goal that is scored today, me and my sons. Very good. Well, well, uh, well, Charlie Diego, the gauntlet's the gauntlet's been uh, been thrown down. Well, I will donate two two bed nets for every goal that scored on Mexico today. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. <laughs> Very nice, very nice. Charlie, you're a Spanish teacher. Do you have a conflict of interest here? Are uh, you, uh... No, I don't think so. I don't think so. I think it, um, I think the rivalry is is enough to uh, to root for the Cameroonians. Very, you know? very good. Well, Ari, <laughs> Ari, we're we're firmly behind you, but let's also make sure that that as we're watching the World Cup today, and and really over the next month. That we're we're taking stock of the partnerships that are involved in pulling off this event, and also just how how partnerships overall uh, can can make huge change in the world. Uh, you three gentlemen are are are, are examples of, of everything that's right, and uh, we appreciate not only your time today but also uh, what you've done to inspire others around you to get involved in this fight against malaria. It's because of people like you that we have. A real chance that we believe that that we will see the end of malaria and the last child dying from the disease in our lifetime. So, so thank you very much from all of us at the UN Foundation. Thank you very much.
Thank you, Chris. Thanks, Thanks so much. much.